Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the star and producer of Wild, Reese Witherspoon, author of the memoir Cheryl Strayed, co star Laura Dern, Hi. and producer, hey, producer Bruno Papandrea. Thank you very much, ladies, for joining us. Thank you for having us. Uh, my pleasure. Cheryl, I'd like to start off. A lot of people may have read the, your memoir or have seen the film or know a lot about the story. I'd just like you to set us up a little bit on, tell us what got you to the Pacific Crest Trail in the early 90s and what it was like re-experiencing that through writing your memoir. It was amazing to re-experience it um, through writing my memoir. I had to really go back and relive um, the hike and the things that, that compelled me to take it. I really began the hike at, I think, the bottom point of my life. My mom died very suddenly when she was 45. And in the couple of years um, after her death, I was essentially uh, self-destructing with grief. I didn't know how to live without my mom. And so I did what most of us do when we're in deep suffering. We begin to dismantle um, so many of the good things about our lives. And I, I became wildly promiscuous. I became involved with drugs. I sort of lost um, the vision of myself as the person um, my mother had raised me to be. And so my decision to take the hike was a way of finding my way back to my strength. I think sometimes we conceive of trips or journeys as an escape. And my hike was the opposite of that. It was a, it was a journey back into um, myself. Reese, I understand that the, that the book came to you to option at a specific point in your career as well, when you were really looking for things to speak to an audience in certain ways, correct, and find female characters to portray in a, in a certain way. Is that right? Yeah, I was, it was a few years ago, and I was just getting sort of frustrated with the roles that I was being offered and not really seeing any interesting, dynamic female leads. Um, you know, the, the scripts just weren't there. And um, so I was sort of toying with the idea of starting a production company. And um, and then Cheryl sent me her manuscript about three months before it came out. And, um, and I was just blown away. It was one of the most beautiful books I'd ever read. And uh, it really was the impetus for me to then call Bruna Papandrea and say, do you want to start this company with me? And Laura, you are playing... Bobby, who is Cheryl's mother, it is a, a particularly, it's, a, it's almost like a, it's a very luminous performance that flickers in and out of the movie and provides a lot of heart for it. In speaking with Cheryl about Bobby and sort of researching what that was like, what did you, what was the key for you for, for playing Bobby? Oh, uh, there's, I feel like there are always so many um, opportunities to get inside what you long to bring to any character, and uh, in this case, we had Cheryl with us, all of us, you know. I, I speak for every member of the cast and crew, you know, that she was with us 98% of the time, and um, for me specifically, Cheryl, in this magnificent love story that she shares with us, carries her mother in her cells in a way I um, aspire to. And, um, and so with that, every breath she takes and the reading of all of her work, not just Wild, um, you get to know her mother, Bobby, as well as the story she shared, the photograph she shared. Um, and I think the thing that she probably gave me that was the, the greatest key, if you will, was um, your willingness to share everything, not only about her life, but about her mother's life, so that I could really learn all that she walked through and the level of earned gratitude that her mother carried, which is unparalleled, um, from the you know love of complaint that I personally have. <laughs> so I had a lot to learn. Um, and she became a, a mother to me in a magnificent way. Bobby and Cheryl uh, really taught me a lot. There's a side note that I, I read recently that Cheryl, your daughter, Bobby, named after your mother, plays the young Cheryl in the movie Reese's character, Young, and kind of had a chance in a way to sort of meet her grandmother, your mother, that she never got a chance to meet. Is that correct? That is. That's right. My daughter, Bobby, is little, is young Cheryl in the movie. And um, there was just this extraordinary uh, moment on set. It was when uh, Laura and Bobby were first introduced to each other. 
uh, Jean-Marc Vallée was sometimes quite improvisational. He would just say, let's, let's shoot this. It's not on the script. Let, let's just do this. He was always capturing um, interesting moments. And he asked Laura to go stand at the end of a hallway. And he said to my daughter, this is your mother. Run into her arms. And my daughter ran down this hallway and leapt into Laura's arms. And uh, it was in the, in, the, in the moment of that leap is when it just... I had that moment where at my bra I realized she was, she was leaping into the arms of the grandmother she would never get to know. And in the form of this beautiful um, woman, um, she got a little bit of that, and so did my son. And it was, uh, you know, it's, I mean, it's way up there in some of like, the top 10 moments of my life. Beautiful. The, Bruno, you and I talked a couple of minutes ago about how quickly the project actually came together for you and Reese. One thing started rolling. You just wrapped about a year ago, is what you mentioned. Let's talk a little bit of how the process went. Cheryl's memoir was published in 2012. How did it come to you guys and how did you get things rolling with Jean Marc? Um, well, it came to Reese, first of all. Uh, Cheryl sent it to Reese and she read it as she does most things over a weekend, straight away, voracious. And uh, then she called me. And we, we were very, like, we, we were, the, one of the things that we're very, the reason I don't like to sit around and we don't like to, um, you know, put things in development. We want to make things. That's our job, you know. That's, that's what we're in the world to do. And uh, we decided very much with this that it was in the world. The book was just so in people's consciousness. It was very important for us to move quickly. And because we were bound by weather to a certain extent, we, we were talking about this kind of in the summer before and we are like, we have to make it next summer. We didn't quite make the summer window, as Reese will heartbreakingly tell you, as she was cold the whole time. Um, but we did make the fall. And so, um, you know, the way that we did that is to keep control of it ourselves. We developed it outside the system. We had private money. We had Nick Hornby write a script. And we kept very few voices in the process, which is very important. And then we were lucky enough to find Fox Searchlight, who was so determined and so in love with the project that they literally opened an office within two weeks. And John Mark came on board just before, really, that at, at kind of at the end of our development process. And we just ran. We ran like the wind. And we kept it very small and portable. We made the film in a way that allowed us to get it done. And it was invigorating. It was great. <laughs> that fast pulse and urgency, I think, is really felt in the film in a lot of ways. A lot of people also know of the film as a, as a uh, film filled with big vistas. Of course, it takes place outdoors. There's a lot of intimate scenes. I'd like to go over to the, to the first clip now, because this is an example of some of the intimate scenes that, uh, that there are in Wild. It's a beautiful scene. The, uh, the crux of it, of course, is the idea of how to find your best self. Reese, that, that to me is, is the arc that Cheryl goes on. Is that how you saw it amongst many, I'm sure, of, of in filming, in preparation, that that sort of idea was, was the driving motivator in the, in the performance, how to find your best self? Yeah, I mean, I think Cheryl says it so beautifully about getting back to the woman that sh her mother wanted her to be. And so many of us uh, wander in life and, and lose our path. And, and there's so many things that every single person in this room has experienced um, that can set you on one course or another, and you have no idea that they're going to happen. Um, but I do think there's something beautiful about... Uh, that it does, it, it's, I love that the end of the film, it's not a relationship that saves this woman. It's not money, it's not her parents, it's not that some thing happened. It, it's that she literally had to save herself. And we all do. Everybody in, in this world has to figure that out at some point. There's also a particular beauty to portraying a character with a, a very specific contemporary edge. And I feel that in those performances, it's very hard to do that. People always, you know, think about characters. People always think about them being period pieces or things. But this, this, this particular film says to me, this is a woman dealing with urgent moments. It, it doesn't matter. It took place early '90s, whatever. It's it's a woman of today. Is that uh, is that a correct assumption in your in your view of her in the film that she's very much a contemporary person? Yeah, and I would say that she's a, a person. It's not just a, a a woman's journey. I think this is actually just a human journey. I think there's so many men that come up and see this film and they say, that's my story. Um, because we all struggle. And um, I was really so moved uh, when I, I read the book that, you know, Cheryl did it by herself. She did this alone for 94 days. She was completely alone. That's, that's always reoccurs to me. Wait, she was alone. 
I think a lot of people travel in life and they do things, but not very many people do it by themselves. Just the idea of journey brings up the idea for the next clip, which is more of what people are talking about when they talk about this movie, some of the big outdoor scenes. Let's take a look. That's an example of the openness that I think Laura was talking about earlier. Cheryl, you were not in in uh, hiking shape when you went on this 94-day trek, were you? You in, in the book, I remember rereading, you had just done heroin, like sort of just prior to, you know, a couple of yeah. weeks earlier, a couple of days earlier, right? A couple of days earlier, yeah. So you were not like, it's not like you were training for it and going yeah. and jumping in. Yeah, I didn't on the surface seem to be somebody who was about to go on a 1,100-mile hike. But, I mean, I think that that's... I mean, that's one of the things that, that I love most about the, what readers have said to me. I, I, we, you don't have to um, have a license to go into the woods. You don't have to have all the right gear or be terribly experienced. You just go and put one foot in front of the other and see what happens. It belongs to all of us, those, those wild places. There's a terrific moment when Reese has to put on a giant backpack that she nicknames Monster. And there's a story that you told at, in Toronto about how you were thinking, oh, we'll just kind of fill it with styrofoam or something, and it'll be, but, but Jean Marc had a different plan. Is that correct, Reese? Well, yeah, the first day of shooting, I mean, I've made tons of movies, and whenever you have a heavy bag, they just stuff it full of newspaper. So I, I put on the backpack, and I had on, the, and they'd stuffed it full of newspaper, and I was la da da. And Cheryl was on set that day. And I saw her and Jean-Marc kind of talking after our first day. He said, cut, 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 cut. He's French-Canadian. He said, uh, what's in the backpack? <laughs> I said, nothing. And he goes, oh, no, no. Uh, uh, people, we need all the things into the backpack. And I was like, are you kidding me? Are you joking me? Because it was like probably the first day I was like walking and walking, walking and into some vista and then walking back. And um, he's, you know, and they stuffed it full of heavy, the, all the equipment. And there I was with 65 pounds on my back. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> and so then cut to later, this is what Cheryl told me. She's like, I was the one that told him to make your backpack heavier. <laughs> and I was like, what are you talking about? She said, well, I thought I was actually doing your favor. That way you didn't have to act like it was heavy. <laughs> That's right. That's right, I saved your ass, man. You just had it. Thanks. A verisimilitude, that right, that's right. <laughs> Bruno, were you ever worried? You were thinking that, you know what, here's Reese carrying 65 pounds. Was she going to spend three weeks in traction after this? Or what was the... No, I was worried know? she would get mad at me, though. I mean, you know, I, that, that's what I was worried at. No, I wasn't, I wasn't worried, but she is a tiny little thing. That is a very heavy backpack. But no, I mean, John, it's not just the backpack. If you see the movie, you'll understand that, like, it's very important. John Mark is a guy who really believes in authenticity. And he had a whole thing where he would not let Reese touch any prop. Like, you know, he wouldn't know, you know, you do not know, you, she cannot know how to put up the tent. It must feel like she has never put up a tent before. And he shot for like 45 minutes because she really didn't know how to put up a tent. <laughs> And everything was new to her, and he wanted her to experience it like Cheryl was. And, you know, he, as a filmmaker, and we must give him so much credit for this, this movie is so a tribute to him because he creates an environment which is very um, intimate for the actors and for the crew. And you're, you're able to do those things. You're able to kind of, you know, have those experiences and roll the camera for an hour to be able to kind of capture that authenticity. And it was, it was great. Speaking of authenticity, much of Laura's scenes in the film with Reese are very much feel very much to me like the kind of memories you get of your parents. We all have them. They're like, they come to you in flashes, a song you remember, something that, that recalls something that they said. And there's a scene in the car where the two of you are talking, and Reese has a moment where she says, I, you know, at my, I can't believe you were so much less sophisticated at my age. And it, it wounds you a little bit, Laura, it's obvious, but it's also that moment when you feel like that's the kind of moment you do remember after a parent has passed, those accidental moments of being inconsiderate or being, being rude or just hurting someone's feelings. Tell me a little bit about the, filming that scene, Laura. Was that a moment where you guys sort of said, this is in some ways a memorial, a, a perfect moment that you would have if it was going to be a movie that would have those big moments like that? Well, it's such a memorable moment and something... Cheryl not only speaks about in Wild, but in her amazing book, Tiny Beautiful Things. So uh, it, it, 
you know, I have such a visceral experience of that moment in a way through her writing. And I think Reese and I both felt that. So we wanted to pay tribute to it, and we all know it. And now we get to know it because we're mothers too. So we've done it, and it's been done to us, which is really awesome when you get both perspectives. <laughs> you suddenly then have compassion for your mother, and then the memories flood back, and you realize the great wisdom <laughs> that you were given. Um, but for me, I know, you know, as magnificent as Nick Hornby's writing is, an adaptation nonetheless is an adaptation. And when the person who remembered it is standing right there, uh, we relied so much on Cheryl. I remember a moment even in that scene saying, is that exactly how your mom said it? Is it, because the way she spoke was with such wisdom and, and poetry that you also want to get yourself around it as an actor so it feels mm -hmm. honest and messy um, and not, um, you know, never preachy. Um, as, as the moment does, and only in memory does it hold the value. So Cheryl uh, just was such a beacon of light to always, hopefully, um, bring me back to your mother. There's a, there's a line in the book where you say that your mother had a full-throated, if I'm quoting correctly, all-encompassing sort of love that is evident even in that scene when there's a little bit of tension between mother and daughter, that, that the love that Bobby has there is never going away. She just sort of deals with it in a way that uh, yes. like parents do. Well, and one of the most difficult things about losing, when you lose a parent at that age that I did, which is, you know, right when you're coming out of your, your adolescence and your teenage years and um, coming into your adulthood. And so you're still in that, you have to resist your parents. It's a developmentally appropriate stance. And you're at the height of your, your youthful arrogance. And I've talked to thousands of people around the world who've said, that's when I lost my mom or my dad too. And there's so much regret because you don't have those years where you get to say, oh, remember when I said that stupid thing to you about being sophisticated? I'm so sorry. I had to, that was one of the demons I had to exercise on the trail. I had to, I had to apologize to my mother without my mother hearing it. And I love that the film has captured that, that, that push and pull between the, the, the deep love um, between the mother and daughter, but also their conflicts. Yeah. There's, there's, it's a very interior film, too. Uh, before we get to the next clip, I just want to ask Reese, the, it is a movie where so much of your performance is, it's, there's, not, there's no voiceover, it's told in flashback, and it's told in the present time, but so much of it is what's going on in your face and what's going on in your eyes at, at various moments. What, what kind of challenge was that for you as a performer? Oh, my gosh, it was so hard, because I don't know if you've noticed, I talk a lot in movies. <laughs> I was going to say, you are, you are known for being very verbal, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> and I talk a lot, and I talk really fast, and I talk in funny accents, and I do funny voices, and this was like nothing. And that was hard. But like the first couple of days, I was like, whoa. It's almost like finding another language, right? If you have to find the language. Of yeah, but it was almost like being in a documentary where some guys were just walking around filming me backpacking. <laughs> that's what it felt like, honestly. Because I didn't have any makeup on. I had not cute costumes. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> Hey, those were nice shorts that yeah. I picked out. <laughs> I looked cute out there. And you're right? super 90s and really high. And, um, but yeah, it was it was a different kind of challenge. And but it was it was physically grueling. I mean, it was grueling. I know I didn't walk a thousand miles, but I walked back and forth up the same hills. Over I have such and sympathy over. for you, Reese. Oh, I know. She doesn't feel sorry <laughs> for me at all. Let's take a moment in our next clip to, to take a look at Reese on the trail and when she meets someone on the highway. As much as this film is, as Reese said, it, it's not gender specific. Men, women, I love movies where people find themselves in the outdoors and kind of have to deal with it. And I actually want to touch on that in a second with, with Cheryl about how it's not a, about a woman versus nature. But the quote right there about women can't walk out in their lives, to all of you, just to anyone jump in, the notion that women can't walk out in their lives, they have children, they have responsibilities, is a very real thing and it's beautifully articulated here. Um, in, in just a, sort of a sense of what the movie represents in that way, how did you feel about, about presenting a story where a woman does walk out in her life because of whatever her circumstances were? Bruna, do you want to start? Oh, God. Um, yeah, I mean, I just became a mother, so um, it's, all, it's, it's stuff that I think about all the time. Um, and this movie, I think, is even more resonant to me for that reason. Um, 
And I, and I don't think, I actually don't think it's specific to women. I don't think men can. Men should, men, men maybe do more just because of, you know, the way the world works. But I give men a lot of credit too because they don't too. You know what I mean? I, 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 li I don't like to kind of make that specific too because, you know, I, I put a lot of uh, faith in fatherhood. Um, but uh, I just, you know, I, I, I love the idea that... Um, that the, what this movie portrays is, a, is how complicated life is for all of us. You know, not just for Cheryl, but for all of us. And how we all have to find our way around that. Uh, Cheryl and Reese, the, the notion of um, it is not a movie about a woman versus nature. It is about finding yourself in nature and growing in that respect is very much the, the underlying thing as well, the underlying feeling. Do you feel that uh, it, it's, it is a, a type of movie, though, that if people look at it, they can say, oh, she's learning how to cook a fire, she's learning how to do this, but once you see it, you walk away saying, this woman is actually finding herself through her surroundings. Right, yeah, I mean, I think so many of the, the tales we have, the narrative tradition throughout time, um, you know, a very, a very powerful one is man versus nature. And so often that journey entails a certain d domination um, of nature and, and that, um, that, that, that the hero needs to be uh, to conquer or vanquish. And, you know, and I, and I never felt like the, the conquering barbarian upon the land on my hike. Um, I felt like somebody who was finding a home in the world uh, um, when I didn't have a home. And the thing that the wilderness really showed me every day is how, you know, there I was all alone and I felt so not alone. I felt so connected to everyone, all of the people on the planet, but also all the living things, you know. And so I think that the, when I was writing the book and, and, you know, asked to really understand more deeply what it was I had done out there, um, I, I, it, that came to me very early on that this, this wasn't... Um, woman versus nature was woman uh, with nature, a woman uh, accepting her own savage nature um, in the wild. And so that was, you know, once I understood that, so many of the, the pieces fell into place, even the ways that I would describe, you know, the landscape or the, the, the other living things that I encountered on the, the trail, you see that, that, that ethic in the language. We're going to take some questions from the audience. Anyone over on the left? Yes, sir. Hi, uh, my question's for Cheryl. I was just wondering if, as an author, you get extremely, if it's difficult in the process of deciding who the screenwriter is and how much, especially for a story like this that's so personal to you, how much involvement you have in that discussion and in the decision and you know, how, how nerve-wracking that is for you. Yeah, it's, it's quite something to have another writer um, consider your book and then, and then take it apart and turn it into something else. Um, the good thing was is that I immediately, I was, you know, I'm a fan of Nick Hornby's writing. Um, we had started, we had sort of forged a relationship um, via email before he was involved with the film. And then once he was asked to adapt the script, he wrote to me and he shared with me his thoughts about what he could do and why, why he thought he would be the best screenwriter for the job. And I didn't have a, an official say in the matter, but he said to me, I won't take the job uh, without your blessing. And which I thought was incredibly generous and, and uh, indicative of, of, of just how he is as both a writer and a person. Um, he also very bravely uh, shared the screenplay with me um, and welcomed my feedback and listened to me when I gave it. So there was, you know, he really, uh, he, he could see a new structure. I mean, my book had to, my, my book couldn't just go be slapped up on the screen. He had to reconfigure um, the trajectory of uh, some of the most important storylines in the book. And he did that just so beautifully. And so I, I just felt, feel nothing but gratitude and respect. Um, it, it is so uh, cool to have such a wonderful writer as Nick Hornby be the person who adapted the screenplay. First, let me say I watch all your movies from the jump to now. But well, my question is this, is there a different Rob you feel from the movies you've done in the past compared to now? Yeah, I mean, it's an evolution, you know? I, I started making movies when I was 14 years old. So I've changed a lot. I think audiences have kind of grown up with me a little bit. <laughs> 
I'll have those horrible moments where like young pop stars will come up to me and be like, I watched your Oscar speech in my pajamas. <laughs> like, great. <laughs> I feel really fresh. <laughs> Um, but it's important. I mean, it's like it's as I get older and I evolve and I have these life experiences, I want to share them. Like um, Cheryl says beautiful thing about audiences connecting, artists connecting to audiences and, and how important it is that connection. Um, you tell them that thing you say about the bridge. <laughs> I love that thing you said about the bridge. We're like a married couple now. Reese is prompting me. <laughs> Um, to tell the stories. No, I mean, I think one of the things that we've all talked about, um, because all of us, you know, it, we've been we're at this for a while, and, um, you know, of course we are excited by uh, getting awards or being nominated for things and all this. That's a very uh, glorious affirmation that, you know, that, that we're liked by, by certain committees of people. Um, but what matters by far uh, the most uh, it's, nothing even comes close to it, is that our work uh, touches you all, you know, that our work finds an audience. And I think about um, all of the people who have come up to me since Wild was published and just said, thank you. I saw myself in your book. And we really aspire to that with the film, too. We want, we want the film to be about what it means to be hum human, what it means to love, what it means to lose, what it means to struggle, what it means to uh, forgive oneself. And I do think of it, you know, the film ends at the Bridge of the Gods, which is this beautiful bridge that spans the Columbia River. And I love that, th I love that symbolically, because I do think that that's what art is. It's, that, it's the bridge that an artist creates um, that connects, you know, the writer to the reader, um, the, the filmmaker to the audience, the, the actress to the audience. And so um, it is pretty serious uh, business. It's a, it's a serious aspiration we have. And um, so thank you. Hello. Um, I just want to say first that like, I watched the trailer and I was moved to tears and I'm so excited to see the film. It looks so beautiful. Um, my question is actually for uh, Laura and Reese. It's kind of like a cliche question, but I like to ask it always. Um, what made you decide to be an actor, like to tell stories in that way? And does it mean something different to you to be an actor now than it did when you started? <laughs> well, I was raised by actors, so I um, got to fall in love with it at a very early age watching them. And um, I think the thing I fell in love with originally was um, watching the collaboration between a filmmaker and the actor. And um, this is a major cheat because I, as I was, it was formulating in me between like age six, seven, eight, that I really was falling in love with this. My parents were working with some of our greatest directors. And so I was on the set with Hal Ashby, Alfred Hitchcock, Martin Scorsese. And they were amazing and hilarious and inventive and having my parents do insane things. And it was collaborative and messy and wild. And I was like, I want to do that. And how it's changed is I still want to do that. <laughs> and so, very rarely you get the opportunity to get to say you're privileged like I am on Wild to have had an experience that matches the very thing I fell in love with, but it's not always the case. Well, I grew up in Nashville, <laughs> Tennessee, uh, with parents who were a doctor and a nurse, so they don't know what I was doing. But I was, an, I was always a really good liar. Um, <laughs> And I really enjoyed telling a story. And the bigger, the better. And still to this day, <laughs> I'll tell them a bunch of things. I'm like, and then it happened like this. And then it happened like that. And, and, and my husband's like, that's not how it happened. I'm like, shut up. You're ruining the story. Um, so I don't know why. I just always wanted to be an actor. Ever since I was like six years old. And I said to my mom, I want to be an actor. And so she took me to acting classes. And I did them every Saturday for four hours a day. There's probably a moment too with a movie like this, just to kind of follow through on that on that line, where 
you've been an actress for a while, and then this represents a new challenge. This is something where you kind of look at it and you say, you know what, I'm not going to wait for something like this to come around. I'm grabbing this now, right? Well, that was the second part of your question, which I thought was really good. Like, why did I start being an actor? I think it's a to I'm a totally... The reasons I do what I do now are totally different than when I began. I think I came from a place of wanting attention and wanting to be seen and wanting to be understood. And, you know, that lasts for a while, you know. And then, and then as you get older and you start to kind of work through your stuff and you go through years of therapy, you <laughs> realize the reasons that you want to be a storyteller change. And that is why a couple of years ago, two years ago, I just had this kind of moment where I was making movies, but I was kind of making them for other people, but I didn't feel particularly connected to any of them, and I was really losing my passion. And I just started to think, if I'm not seeing what I like and it's not coming to me, why am I not out there proactively creating it or seeking it out? Or I read everything there is possible to read. Like, why am I not developing material for, not just for myself, but for all these great actresses that I know. Um, and so that's what got me excited. And now I feel like I have a whole new directive. And I feel like I have a new, it's really reignited my passion for what I do. Well, on the heels of that, having uh, seen both this in The Good Lie and seeing you producing, can you talk about also that, you know, as you're talking about this progression or evolution, now your progression into the producing, directing, you know, seeing the whole process in another light. I'd like to hear what you have to say about what you've learned or are learning in that regard. On both, with both films in mind. With both, okay. Um, well, I think, you know, it's been interesting just to take the years of experience, the cumulative experience, you know, Laura and Bruna and we, we, we've all been in the business for a long time. So, um, you know, we all know what development is, but it actually taking it on is a, it's a daunting task. It's Sisyphean. I mean, you honestly feel like you're pushing a giant rock up a hill that's just going to roll back over you. And we, um, but it's, it's the only thing to me at this point, particularly with the way, you know, Hollywood is structured now, it's the only way to get that purity of vision, like really get Cheryl's true vision of her own story straight to the screen um, is by, you know, streamlining that process. And so that's what Bruna and I did with just developing the film outside of the studio system and then presenting it to them whole. Because I've had all of these frustrating conversations for 20 plus years with studios that are like, well, do you, we don't want you to curse in the movie and we really don't want you to have sex in the movie with like, not your husband, because that would be really unlikable. And <laughs> those just aren't real characters. I mean, people are messy. Women are dynamic and interesting and complex and they're not all nice and they're not all bad and they're just as dynamic as, as any male character we see. We just, we don't have as many opportunities to put them out there. So, you know, just taking control of that process has been really exciting. And to bring Gone Girl, we, we produced Gone Girl this year as well. Um, and, you know, it's just been interesting to make characters and opportunities for actresses that are changing the conversation about the way we see women on film. Hello. Um, first of all, I should say this is one of my absolute favorite books of all time. I love it. I read it, and I immediately told my mom, I was like, Mom, you have to read this book. She read it. She loves it. Um, so I'm very, very excited to see the movie. Um, I know in the book, they, um, you journey back um, to the flashbacks between your hikes. Did you guys shoot um, the flashback scenes first or the hiking first, or did you kind of do that all together? What was the kind of the process of that? Um, yeah, that's a good question. We we had a weather limitation. We started in October in Portland, and we had a finite amount of time before it started to snow. And then about a week before we started shooting, the government shut down. And every single one of our locations was a national park. <laughs> so that was really fun. Bruna was um, sweating and sweating. She's like, but she figured it all out. We managed to shoot some stuff around until they reopened the parks. And um, so we shot all of the trail for five weeks. And then the last two weeks, we shot all the flashbacks. Hi, how are you? Thank you so much for coming. Election, uh, Alexander Payne filmed, you know, the movie in, you know, Papillion High School. So you went to Nebraska, right? 
Uh, no, yeah, yeah. So how was making movie? You know, because you were still young, you know, still not famous. So do, do, do you have a n- nice, good me- memory? But I love Nebraska. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> um, yeah, w- I did this movie called Election in Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah. Um, and part, part one of the reasons I did this movie called Election was because I saw this amazing movie called Citizen Ruth, starring Laura Dern, that was directed by Alexander Payne. That if shot ha- in Omaha, Nebraska. That was shot in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, and, yeah, I mean, if you haven't seen Sis and Ruth, that's, uh, it's, it's one of the movies that made me just want to be an actress and want to strive to be as wonderful as Laura comedically is in that movie. Um, it's, it's, it's a brilliant performance. Um, but I saw that movie, and then Alexander had the script for election, and I went and auditioned for it, and we ended up shooting in a real high school. And so there were all these kids milling around. Half the kids in the movie are just real high school kids, like, excuse me, I have to get to class. And, uh, but it was really, it was a great experience because, you know, that high school stuff, it just really sticks with you, doesn't it? I'd like to wrap up just by asking in the spirit of Cheryl's story, how did any, if anyone wants to jump in, how did doing this film, taking this journey change you? What did you learn about yourself? Reese, it sounds like you probably learned that you could actually carry a 65 pound pack, right? I learned how to put up a tent. I could really put up a tent. Now yeah. I can. Right yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Give me 10. Anybody? Are we going down the line? Yeah. I've um, learned how to walk in high heels. <laughs> Hilarious. True. I, be, until all this Hollywood stuff happened, never walked in high heels. Uh, I learned that I have three new extraordinary best friends. Oh, I was going to say that. Oh. Sorry, Bryn, I stole it. I've heard you think. <laughs> Now, I mean, I'm, I'm like going to sound so corny, but like, I, I think for me, the message is like, you know, try and be your best self. And I'm really trying after seeing the film and by being really inspired by these three people to be my best self. And what a great, you know, what a great thing to have in your life. Bruno Papandrea, Laura Dern, Cheryl Strait, Reese Witherspoon, thank you all very much. Thank for you, joining. everybody. Thank you so much. Start this company with me. And Laura, you are playing. Bobby, who is Cheryl's mother, it is a, a particularly, it's, a, it's almost like a, it's a very luminous performance that flickers in and out of the movie and provides a lot of heart for it. In speaking with Cheryl about Bobby and sort of researching what that was like, what, did you, what was the key for you for, for playing Bobby? Oh, uh, there's, I feel like there are always so many um, opportunities to get inside what you long to bring to any character, and uh, in this case, we had Cheryl with us, all of us, you know? I I speak for every member of the cast and crew, you know, that she was with us 98% of the time, and um, for me specifically, Cheryl, in this magnificent love story that she shares with us, carries her mother in her cells in a way I um, aspire to. And, um, and so with that, every breath she takes and the reading of all of her work, not just Wild, um, you get to know her mother, Bobby, as well as the story she shared, the photographs, she- things about our lives. And I, I became wildly promiscuous. I became involved with drugs. I sort of lost um, the vision of myself as the person um, my mother had raised me to be. And so my decision to take the hike was a way of finding my way back to my strength. I think sometimes we conceive of trips or journeys as an escape. And my hike was the opposite of that. It was a, it was a journey back into um, myself. Reese, I understand that the, that the book came to you to option at a specific point in your career as well, when you were really looking for things to speak to an audience in certain ways, correct, and find female characters to portray in a, in a certain way. Is that right? Yeah, I was. It was a few years ago, and I was just getting sort of frustrated with the roles that I was being offered, and not really seeing any interesting dynamic female leads. Um, you know, the the scripts just weren't there, and um, so I was sort of toying with the idea of starting a production company, and um, and then Cheryl sent me her manuscript about three months before it came out, and. Um, 
and I was just blown away. It was one of the most beautiful books I'd ever read. And uh, it really was the impetus for me to then call Bruna Papandrea and say, do you want to um, Interesting moments. And he asked Laura to go stand at the end of a hallway. And he said to my daughter, this is your mother, run into her arms. And my daughter ran down this hallway and leapt into Laura's arms. And it was in the, in the, in the moment of that leap is when it just, I had that moment where my bra- I realized she was, she was leaping into the arms of the grandmother she would never get to know. And in the form of this beautiful um, woman, um, she got a little bit of that, and so did my son. And it was, uh, you know, it's, I mean, it's way up there in some of the, like, the top ten moments of my life. Beautiful. The, Bruno, you and I talked a couple of minutes ago about how quickly the project actually came together for you and Reese. One thing started rolling. You just wrapped about a year ago, is what you mentioned. Let's talk a little bit of how the process went. Cheryl's memoir was published in 2012. How did it come to you guys, and how did you get things rolling with Jean-Marc? Um, well, it came to Reese first of all. Uh, Cheryl sent it to Reese and she read it, as she does most things, over a weekend, straight away, voracious. And uh, then she called me. And we, we were very, like, we, we were... The Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the star and producer of Wild, Reese Witherspoon, <laughs> author of the memoir, Cheryl Strayed, <laughs> co-star Laura Dern, <laughs> and producer... Hey, this is Bruno Papandrea. Thank you very much, ladies, for joining us. Thank you for having us. Uh, my pleasure. Cheryl, I'd like to start off. A lot of people may have read the, your memoir or have seen the film or know a lot about the story. I'd just like you to set us up a little bit on, tell us what got you to the Pacific Crest Trail in the early 90s and what it was like re-experiencing that through writing your memoir. It was amazing to re-experience it um, through writing my memoir. I had to really go back and relive um, the hike and the things that, that compelled me to take it. I really began the hike at, I think, the bottom point of my life. My mom died very suddenly when she was 45. And in the couple of years um, after her death, I was essentially uh, self-destructing with grief. I didn't know how to live without my mom. And so I did what most of us do when we're in deep suffering. We begin to dismantle um, so many of the good we shared. Um, and I think the thing that she probably gave me that was the, the greatest key, if you will, was um, your willingness to share everything, not only about her life, but about her mother's life, so that I could really learn all that she walked through and the level of earned gratitude that her mother carried, which is unparalleled, um, from the you know love of complaint that I personally have. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a lot to learn, um, and she became a, a mother to me in a magnificent way. Bobby and Cheryl uh, really taught me a lot. There's a side note that I, I read recently that Cheryl, your daughter, Bobby, named after your mother, plays the young Cheryl in the movie Reese's character, young, and kind of had a chance in a way to sort of meet her grandmother, your mother, that she never got a chance to meet. Is that correct? That is. That's right. My daughter, Bobby, is little, is young Cheryl in the movie. And um, there was just this extraordinary uh, moment on set. It was when uh, Laura and Bobby were f first introduced to each other. Uh, Jean-Marc Vallée was sometimes quite improvisational. He would just say, let's, let's shoot this. It's not on the script, let, let's just do this. He was always capturing 